Hello, friends, and welcome to the Wisdom for Life broadcast. This is Pastor Glenn with another episode that we hope will bless you. We're going to have some fun today. Who likes cereal? Okay, just me. That's good. Just good. Just me. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Let love... I'm still hearing pages. Sorry. Let love be your what? Highest goal. What's the number one goal? Love. I want you to see the both and here rather than the either or. There's not a dichotomy here. God wants you to have both. He wants you to have fruit, and he wants you to have the gifts of the Spirit. Fruit and gifts. Say fruit and gifts. I want you to see this. Let love be your highest goal, but also desire special abilities or the gifts the Spirit gives, especially the gift of prophecy. So what does it say? Let's have love, which is a fruit. Remember Galatians chapter 5, we talked about that. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, and meekness, and temperance. God wants you to have, or self-control. God wants you to have all of the fruit. Say all of the fruit. But along with the fruit, He wants you to have gifts too. Not either or, both and. I want you to see... When you're out on a playground, when you're a kid, the things you're going for are the swings and the teeter-totters. Come on now. That's what you're going for. Monkey bars? Nah. And I was too fat a kid for the monkey bars anyways. I get to like one and fall, okay? But the teeter-totter, I love because I was a fat kid. I was a big kid. Whoever's going on the other side is going flying. <laughs> At the middle of that teeter-totter, a little bit of uh, engineering here, is a fulcrum. A fulcrum. It's the, it's the part that goes in between both sides of the lever. When the fulcrum is in the center, God can do great things. The fulcrum must be moved to the center of a Pentecostal church. Not all the way to one end, where it's all manifestations and gifts, but no fruit. And not all the way to the other end, where it's all, we just love you, love you, love you, love you. Goo, 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 goo. You know, serve you the word like an airplane. Open up. <laughs> and then they spit up all over the place, you know? No. No, we want you to mature. We want you to grow. We're going to love you. We also want you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, operating the gifts of the Spirit, and we want you to live a centered life, a balanced life. Would you pray with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus this morning, help us with our flakiness. Help us with our loopiness. Help us with our nuttiness. Help us with our tricks. God, help us to bring fruit and gifts. And help us to do it by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, come on. Amen. So if you like cereal, and I'm thinking you do, come on. Is there anybody, that you, do, you remember, do you remember back in the day, used to be the show called the Beverly Hillbillies. There was a guy by the name of Jethro Bodine. You know what I'm talking about? He'd get the biggest bowl in the kitchen. I mean, fill it full. Come on. Come on, Pete. Fill it full of cereal and then just shove it down. Shove it down. Compact it down. Mike, you don't know what I'm talking about? You never, you never fill a bowl like that and just put it down like that and then pour the milk in, right? These people that pull, pour the milk into the bowl first and then the cereal, you're weird. You need saved. Come on up to the altar. I'm going to help you with that. We'll get you straightened out. You put the cereal in first, then you shove it down as much as you can so there's more room for more cereal. And then you pour the milk over the top, right? You say you love cereal, but the truth is you love milk and cereal. Come on. Because there isn't anybody that would take some of this cereal, pour it straight into their mouth, and pour themselves a glass of milk and then drink the milk that way and have a good time with it. There's just something, listen, there's just something about Captain Crunch. When it's got the milk in it, you put the Captain Crunch in your mouth, and if you're just like me, 48 years old, you'll, you suck the milk right out of the Captain Crunch. Because you got nothing better to do with your life. Absolutely nothing better to do with your life than to make sure that milk comes back out of that cereal. Right? Come on, that's how to eat cereal, man. It takes, this, it takes the milk and the cereal. And I, you know, when I look at cereal, when I look at milk, I, I can't help but think about the many different churches that I've been a part of, maybe I've ministered in or I've attended. Sometimes they're just dry. 
They're full of people. Maybe the building, maybe it's a big box. The building. It's just a big box. And maybe you picked that church because of the big box. You know, in town, people all want to look for the big box. I don't care how big the box is. If what's on the inside isn't awesome, hello. And if what's on the inside ain't coming out of the box. Now, some of you thought I had already opened this. <laughs> I'm smarter than that. I'm smarter than that. So we want what's on the inside to come on the outside. I don't care what the box looks, box looks like. I don't care what, how big the box is. I want to know what's inside the box. Is it going to come out of the box? What's inside the box, is it going to be soaked in the Spirit? You know, I look at this box right here, Frosted Flakes, and I think about how many Christians I know that are Frosted Flakes. You don't know any. You probably think your pastor's a little frosted. You know he's flaky. But I look at this and I think, you know what? There's fruit. Look at this. There's fruit in the picture. There's fruit in the picture, but there's no fruit in the box. That's a little misleading, isn't it? I go by some signs, some church signs, and I'll see a flame. I'm not knocking anything. I'm just saying some will and some won't. I'll see something different on the sign than I see. You don't, you don't know what I'm talking about? I've even been to some Assembly of God churches, and I'm like, is this an Assembly of God church? It's almost like, you tricked me. You, you, what, what's the deal? And here's the deal. There's an overemphasis on the cereal, but the cereal ain't nothing. It's just dry until it meets the milk. I don't care what kind of people go to your church. If the Spirit of God isn't evident in your church, listen, we need an audience of one, and it's the Spirit of the living God, and when He shows up, everything changes. I don't care how much people go or how many people go, how big your box is, how pretty it looks. Listen, I don't care how many you got on the inside. If you don't have Jesus and you ain't got the Spirit of God, you're dry. I don't want to go to a dry church. And then I look at this one, Frosted Flakes, and I see Tony the Tiger. And he's always saying they're great. And here's the deal. Thank you for that. That was awesome. That was a good impression of it. He's always saying they're great. And I'm thinking about how many people are telling the world about their church, but not telling the world about Christ. I don't want you to tell the world about your church. People will come here and get saved, or they may come and go somewhere else. Cool. Just get in. Get inside and get in the milk. They're great. It's almost like there's a pridefulness rather than a love for people. Because a true love for people doesn't matter where they end up next, as long as they get in the milk, as long as they get saved, as long as they get spirit filled. I'm not worried about that. Are you? And I think about this, and what's great is not the people, what's great is God. What's great is the living God. Not the people, not the box, not what's on the inside. And if it's got no milk in it, it's dry anyway. Who's a Frosted Flake fan? Who's, who's, a, who's really, who's, come on, you don't want any of this? You don't, you, oh, Georgia, did you just raise your hand? Oh, I, I seen him. I, I, got, I got glasses on. I seen him. But I think you want some Frosted Flakes. Have you met any Frosted Flakes in your life? You, <laughs> Take it home to the kids, brother. Give them a hand. Come on. Want to pound it? Shebang. Awesome. You know, we don't want to have pride in the people. We don't want to have pride in the building. You know, can I, can I just say this right now? This just occurred to me. It's not my notes, but please don't get mad. Used to be a goat on Sesame Street. I get mad. I get mad. I get mad. Don't get mad. Get glad. We'll have whole entire, I've, I've pastored four AG churches. We'll have whole entire fights on what, the way the building looks or the way the service goes or what songs are played. Who we ought to be fighting is the enemy for the souls and the loss of the world and bringing the glory of God into their lives so that they can be healed, they can be touched. I don't want to be a dry church. Listen, I don't care what the carpet looks like. Hey, this is actually quite good. I've been, I pastored some churches. Their carpet looked like a, a Chinese buffet. I'm not lying, am I, honey? You know that 1980s mob? You know what I'm talking. You don't know. You don't remember mob? You don't know what that is. Now the guys don't know what mob is because the guys are guys. Yeah. 
Guys don't know what color that is. Guys, you know what color teal is? See, you don't know that either. That's good. So what do we do? I, I, I go shopping for cereal. You like Apple Jacks? There's no apple in there, just jacks. It's just jacked up. There's no apple in there. There's no fruit in there. It's misleading. The church of God ought to be the answer and offer the answer. And the answer isn't you, and it's not me. It's the Spirit of Christ in us. And that's what the world is hungry for, man. They want breakfast. They want it bad. I caught a video yesterday of all the, all the women in our church and then their guests, and they were all saying, we want, we want breakfast. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. And I've got a video of it, and I'm going to use it. <laughs> you, ever pull a, you ever pour a bowl of cereal, you pour it, and then you go and you look for the milk, milk and you realize the milk's all gone. And then you put water in that bowl, right? And he's... <laughs> You very gingerly walk back in the kitchen, grumbling under your voice, you're mad now, and you try to get it back in the box. Because it's no good without any spirit. It's no good without any milk. It's no good without any life. I'd rather have three people in my church in the Spirit of God than 300 in no Spirit of God. Now look at this. You need love too. Not just the gifts, but you need love. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, Jesus said something really, really cool. He said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father to you, but wait or tarry in Jerusalem until you were endued with power from on high. They ended up waiting 10 days. And we read right past that. We think, well, big deal. I want you to think of how big a deal this is. 120 people in a room that's very small are in a 10-day prayer service together. I want you to, just come on, I want you to just smell what that room might smell like. They're there for 10 days. I, think about this, it's probably hot, it's probably nasty, it's sweaty, it's, it's gross, and you gotta hang out with the same people for 10 days. I know people that can't stand other church people for 10 minutes. Pastored a long time. 10 days! If you don't believe you need the Spirit of God and the miraculous infilling of the Spirit to love somebody, I don't know who you are because you're going to need it. Love's a miracle. It is. You try loving somebody for 10 days straight, you're going to need the Spirit to show up. You know, there's a lot in the Bible we don't see. We don't hear the rest of the story. But these are people, and these people have to be together for 10 days straight. You don't think people were like, dude, you need a toothbrush. Dude, you're getting on my nerves. Do that. Come on. Quit praying so loud. I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit irritated. And I, you know what? When I preach this kind of stuff, I look at you guys, and you just, you, not me. First Corinthians 13, 8, love never fails. Can I tell you something? Love is the only thing that's going to remain in heaven. Paul even says later, he says, in the end, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And we've talked about this before. Why? Why doesn't hope and faith remain in heaven? Because you won't need it anymore. But you'll still need love. You'll still be operating in love. I, I want you to see this too. It doesn't say that Gifts remain. In fact, Paul later says, these talking about spiritual gifts, in the context of heaven, Paul says that all of these gifts are going to end. He says they'll cease. We're not saying that we're cessationists here. We need the gifts now in order to get the job done to be witnesses. Right? But Paul says in the scheme of things in heaven, you're not going to have to pray in tongues in heaven. Because you'll be talking to Jesus and you'll have a perfect language and a perfect experience with him. You understand? So, so don't put manifestations and gifts up here and then say, well, you know, kind of love maybe, maybe here. No, if love, Paul says you're going to need that for eternity, not just 10 days. 
10 billion years. Love is what's going to make it happen. He says love's the goal. Love is the, is the ultimate goal. And he says, if you're going to operate in spiritual gifts, I'd rather that you prophesy so that you can edify one another. You can encourage one another with a word that people can understand. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, I want you to operate in love. I want you to understand that love will never fail, even if you're stuck with people for 10 days. Love will never fail. I wonder if we can identify as Pentecostals as being fruitful Pentecostals, not just gifted Pentecostals. You see, many Pentecostal churches are all toot and no fruit. Can I talk about a, fruit, a few of them? You know, toot, this kind of toot. You bunch of dirty minds. Hallelujah. I don't know what toot you were thinking. Great nuts, church of God. Great nuts. <laughs> this is what I picked out. The lady at Walmart helped me out with this. Um, this one is actually great nut flakes. So you got the flakes and the nuts in the church. And here's the deal. It's got, it's got fruit pictured on the front of the box too, but there's no fruit inside. There, there's nothing inside. There's not even a free toy inside. There's just, there's just nuts and flakes. And, and, and what is the deal with the, this? You know, when we see that we can have a yabba dabba do service, we can, get, we can get all fired up in what God can do and what, what we can believe God for. But what really needs to come out into the community and in our lives is the fruit. Let, let, me, let me put it to you this way. Paul said this. He said in 1 Corinthians 10.31, So whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. And then later in Colossians 3.17, And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God, the Father through him. Paul is saying, if you get excited when you're in a service, but you don't in the world when you go out and you do your job in the marketplace, if you're not just as full of love, joy, and peace out there, then you're a nut. You're a flake. And believe you me, I've met them. I've met guys, guys that just blow off in tongues and have a Great service in God, and then I see him screaming at the kids in the parking lot. And a hush fell over the crowd. You, my friend, are a grape nut. There's no grapes. That's a fruit. Just nuts. You'll get excited in a, in a service, go on a Jericho run. You ever see those Jericho runs? I've been in some. I took a pastor at one time, and, and the former pastor was there, and three guys went on this run. Woo! And the former pastor leaned over to me and said, it's all yours now, kid. What are you going to do? <laughs> you know, and nobody's here to defend themselves. They'll, we'll let the innocent remain nameless. But the bottom line is, is later on, there wasn't any love in their life. They could just go on runs. They could shout. They could you know, rolling the aisles, they can, you know, that's where we get the holy roller thing, I guess, but we can do all it, jump up and down and shout, and that's all good stuff, but when you leave the building, and you don't have any love, joy, or peace in your heart for anybody that you come around, you blew your witness, and then people say, I don't want to be a nut, I don't want to be a flake, show me the fruit, who likes great nut flakes, Listen, if I get a few more amens, you may just have breakfast on me. Next couple. Hey, Ron, you like it, don't you? Hi, Ron. There you go. And you're looking good today, sir. You're looking awesome. Let's talk about, a, let's talk about another type of fruit and cereal in church. Uh, here we go. Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops. No fruit, just loops. Just loopy people. No fruit at all. This is misleading. This isn't of God. And I think about the Pentecostal services I've been in. And listen, you're tame. You are tame. I mean, you could turn up the heat a little if you want. I'm good. But I've been in some loopy services, man. And I mean, God, start moving, brother. But here's what bugs me about that. You know what some of the other fruit are? Well, let's talk about the last fruit of the Spirit. Let's talk about a few of the others. How about self-control? How about self-control? How about meekness? 
What are we talking about? Temperance. You see, I've seen people go up to altars, be slain in the spirit, get caught, be covered in a blanket. You know, the ladies all get a little blanket. Remember those days? Just me. Remember those days when the ladies would fall down even with pants on? Oh, get that blanket over. <laughs> She's got pants on. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Am I the only one that thinks about this? Some of you are like, I can't believe he's, it's, he's against blankets. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just saying it's weird. They got pants on. Why are you blanket? Cover them. Yeah, cover them. Good. All right, whatever. You know what? I think some of those people are falling down because the pastor's breath is bad. I don't know. Is it? <sighs> oh. Catch me. You better liven up, man. You're stuck with me. You voted me in again last week. Where are we going to go now? <laughs> We're, you're stuck. <laughs> Do you know where you are, boy? <laughs> yeah. All right, so what are, what are Fruit Loops? These are people that uh, they get all stirred up. They get all stirred up in God. But their life on Monday through Friday is sinful. They don't ever have a life change. The, lo the world is looking at your life in parentheses. What do I mean by that? What's coming out of your mouth isn't a big a deal as the way you're living in front of them. And if you're telling the world there's power in the Holy Spirit, but all week long, you're telling dirty jokes, you're, all week long, you're, you're talking about the next thing you're going to go do on the weekend, and you know it's not godly, and you think, well, you know, I'm not really, you know, I'm just, I'm just being me. I'm just being me. But the world is saying, hey, that spirit thing don't work. Because there ought to be something different about the house of God. There ought to be something different about God's people. And doesn't God say, I, behold, I've called you out to remain and be holy. Holy means to be separate from the world. You don't act like the world. You are part of Christ. You represent Christ. You are an ambassador of the kingdom, Paul says. You tell the world about Jesus. And so if you're walking around and you're like, hey, it's all loops in the service. But listen, throughout the week, Joseph, I love you, man. You're cool. Everybody know Joseph? What I like about Joseph is, is this thick hair. That's awesome, buddy. Got the thickest hair I've ever seen. I told him this morning, I just said, you know those Chia pets that come out? Like, to, He's got thicker hair than a Chia pet. Chia, 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 chia. I love you, man. You got some cereal out of that, okay? See you tonight, buddy. All right, good. You going to win at bowling tonight? Yeah, doubt it. <laughs> oh, come on, Joseph. And then there's tricks. How many of you ever felt like you got tricked at church? <laughs> Don't you raise your hand. You're too young for this, son. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> Fruity shapes are back. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and the whole entire cereal is supposed to taste like fruit. whole entire cereal is supposed to look like fruit. It ain't fruit. There's no fruit in it at all. There's just this lion rabbit. <laughs> that dude's a liar. He ain't right. He's telling people, you know, this is what it's all about and everything. And it's like silly rabbit tricks are for kids. No, silly church member. The church is for the lost. You'd have found. You're not the lost. Well, pastor, uh, this particular message this morning does not necessarily minister to me. This is why I've called one of the deacons. And I am so blessed that a deacon heard me out, and at the next board meeting, we'll hear from God. If nobody got saved, what do we do? Don't you already know the truth? Don't I know the truth? How long does it take you to sit here before you know everything it is that you need to know? You say, well, Pastor, I'm coming back because maybe you can tell me something new. There isn't anything new under the sun. Either you know Jesus and His Word, or you don't. He say, well, that didn't minister to me. Well, you ain't mature. Because if you're mature, you know what, what mature people do? They don't trick the lost. They know the church exists as a hospital for the wounded. And it's not just a hospital. It's a mass unit. It's a mobile army surgical hospital. It needs to move. Stop thinking that it's rooted in a building. It's rooted in you. You're the church. And you're mobile. 
And you're an army. You're not an audience. It shouldn't matter how good the preaching is. And brother, you played that one song and I got a goosebump right here. Why do we call it a service if no one's serving? Four or five people in the worship team and the pastor getting up sweating. That was good, pastor. Drink a little bit more coffee next week. We're tricking the world. This place was designed. These people, you, us, we were designed by Christ to bring the fruit of righteousness to the world. That's why this exists. Who likes tricks? Yeah, okay, I'll help you guys out, man. Here you go. You got it. You got it. Oh, stretch, stretch. <laughs> right, don't trick him. Thanks, honey. You're all, I can always count on you. You got my back. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, a very poignant verse of Scripture. It says, but you'll receive power after what? After the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be what? My what? What's the power for? Is it to shake and bake in the altar? This, I mean, this is a moment of clarity right here. Every Pentecostal church has to know this. You do get power, but the power isn't for services or just for services. The power is to witness. So if you're in a service and the power of God comes upon you, Monday through Friday, you ought to be winning souls. Or it wasn't that great of a service. It says, after that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses. The Greek word for witness is martyrio. It's where we get the word martyr. It means to death. It means you give your life as a witness. You give up yourself. You give up your selfishness. You give up your pride. You give up your agenda. You give up your preferences. People must know about the love of God. And if you don't love God and you don't love people, they'll never know God loves them. A lot of them have come from broken homes. The strategic attack of the enemy has been towards marriages and towards homes. Why? So that another generation and another generation is raised up to not know the love of the Father because they haven't had the Father's love in the home. And they're hurting for it. They're hungry for it. And you and I go out with an agenda that is representative of not the kingdom, but of our own personal homogenous preferences. What is homogenous? Homogenous is whatever looks like me, talks like me, acts like me, dresses like me. But yet I turn in my Bible to the end of the book, in the book of Revelation, and it says, And I seen before the throne every tribe, every nation, every tongue, saying salvation belongs to our God. We are far too, far too passionate about the things that do not win the loss. Dare I say, watch out. Here comes the big one. If I don't get an email on anything else, I'll get one on this one. Dare I say that we should be even more passionate about the gospel than what God has given us to do. Oh, lots of amen from non-sports fans. I just didn't hit your nerve. I'll get it next week. And lastly, I see the church as a, a raisin bran assembly. Yeah, I do. I do. Because there's, there's fruit on the box and there's fruit in the box. Yeah, yeah. There, and, and this one in particular, what I really love about it is You've got raisins and you've got nanas in there. You've got bananas in there and raisins. Isn't that awesome? That's pretty cool. And the way I think about it, there's enough fiber in there to keep you moving. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> Move.
You want it? Buddy, I, I will give it to you because you know I like you. You need the brand. <laughs> yeah. I just want to talk a little bit about, just, just a tiny bit, I'll land the plane here, on, on bitterness, unforgiveness, and anger. That, that cannot happen in our midst. None. Zero. Get, get it worked out right away. What, listen, as we're on a journey together, imagine being in that upper room again for 10 days. There's going to be moments. There's going to be sticky moments. There's going to be sparks sometimes. That's what happens when iron sharpens iron. You're going to get in the midst of people that God is going to assign to you. You see, God is going to assign you people. He's going to bring people into your life that rub your cat fur the wrong direction. On purpose. Because he's going to want to bring more love, more fruit out of you. And you're going to have to learn to crucify your flesh. You're going to have to learn to crucify all of that bad attitude in you for the sake of the lost and for the sake of others around you. And that's tough to do as an American because we don't, we don't want anybody messing with our fur. We want it going one direction only. But God will send people into your life that will pet your fur the wrong way. And when it's rubbed the wrong way, you're going to want to show these claws. And listen, knock that off. Listen, a soul-winning church can't, can't act that way. People will not get saved in that environment. You won't have babies in that kind of environment. Think about, think about how babies are made. Okay, stop thinking about it. Stop. But it's not, in, it's not in hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness. You don't make children that way. People will not be raised in a church like that. They won't come. They will, they'll, they'll smell the dissension and the bitterness and the unforgiveness and the anger. They'll smell that stuff. And, and if, if you and I aren't willing to crucify that kind of stuff, you know, some of you, you need to understand, I got to do the same thing. Some of you, you're going to leave church today and there's going to be a temptation. Well, did you see what happened in the service? That, yeah, I, I, I saw what happened. I can't believe that. And you'll do it at Wendy's right in front of like the person taking your order. And they're like, I know what church you go to. I ain't going there. It's no better there than it is out here. I'm wanting love. I want to be around the fruit. I want peace and joy. And let, you don't have it. You're just mad all the time. You're just angry all the time. I, 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 love, I love what 1 Corinthians 14.33 says. It says, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Peace has a God. P peace isn't a what, it's a who. It's a person, Jesus. Hello? It's, he's, a, he's a person, Jesus. Now, now watch this. As in all the churches of the saints. And then later, Paul says this in Romans 16, 19. He says, be uh, excellent at what is good. Be innocent of evil. And then it says, and the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. It doesn't say you'll crush him. It doesn't say that, that someone else will crush him. It doesn't say pastor will. This, people tell me this all the time. They come up and say, Pastor, you know you really stepped on my feet. No, I didn't. It wasn't your feet. It was the devil's. And the person that did the crushing was God. Listen, God wants to deal with things. Let him deal with it. You know what the, you know what the coolest thing ever? You, you, want, you, you want to have some fun? Here's how to have some fun. Are you ready? Watch this. Go through life smiling at people and laughing all the time. No matter what happens, they'll think you're crazy. But, but, watch this. After a while, they'll go, you know what? At least that person isn't boring. You know what? At least that person has life. You know what? I want that, what that person's got. And you know what? I don't want to be this way anymore because they're happy and I'm not. They got joy and I don't. They got peace and I don't. I'm trying to press their buttons, but there are no buttons. Let God press their buttons. What does the Bible say? Pray for them. And they heap hot coals of conviction on their head, right? Hello. You know where that comes from? That was a culture back then. They heated their fires. They would go. Now watch this. They would go for their homes. They would go to a community place. Well, this sounds like church. They would go to a community place. They would get hot coals. They would put it inside of a pot. They'd carry it with a towel over the top of their heads. And they would carry that hot coal home. They would put it in their, in their fire. And they would heat the whole entire home. 
And what is God saying? You might be the only one in our midst that has the flame, right? Share it and watch it spread. Watch it go home. Watch it warm up people's lives. Watch other people get happy. It's contagious. It's contagious. It's a good time. Get around somebody like Jeb Bunny. He's crazy. I like out of 50 plus, I sit next to Jeb because he's hilarious. We'll, we'll joke about burritos, we'll joke, won't we, Jeb? We party, buddy. And he's a party animal. But you know what? I never see a frown on his face. He's always happy. He's always joyful. He's, does he got stuff going on? Yeah. Is there stuff I do that probably ticks him off uh, all the time? <laughs> I don't know, but, 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 it, but he's always smiling. And when I'm around that, I want to be heated up. I want to be warmed up too. And that's what God wants for you. The church I see is a church that's moving. It's got fruit. It's got love, joy, and peace, but it's also got self-control. It's not measuring just the manifestations and gifts, but it's also measuring fruit. And can I remind you, can I remind you that Jesus said the qualifier of people knowing that you're a disciple he said that in the book of John, chapter 13, verse 35. He said, you'll know you're my disciple by your manifestation gifts. By your love. By your love. Can I remind you, in Matthew 7, 16, he said, you'll know them by their fruit. Um, nowhere in Scripture does it say you'll know them by their gifts. It says, by their fruit. Have you ever seen an apple tree or an orange tree or a pear tree or a partridge in a pear tree? Or Have you ever seen a tree harvested? Have you ever? Do you know how they do that mechanically now? Can, who, who can I mess with here? Who haven't I already? Can it, oh, oh, Chad. Chad. I can't reach him. can't reach him. But here's what they would do. They take a machine and these forks come up to the trees and it grabs the tree by the trunk, a bunch of them at one time. And then it starts to shake the tree. And then all the fruit drops loose and then falls into the machine. And then they sort it out from some of the branches and that sort of thing. And you may be wondering why God's shaking you. You may be wondering why life is shaking you. You may be wondering why the Lord is shaking you. Sometimes God shakes you to get the fruit loose again, to get you moving again, to get you on your knees again, to get you back to a place of desperation where you're trusting the Holy Spirit again, to get you focused on the kingdom again and not your finances and not your job and not all of the other things that weigh us down and entangle us in the affairs of the world, to get you focused back on His love.